It's time for At The Hops, the program that brings crafty songwriters and craft brews together for one intoxicating experience. And now, fresh off the wagon is your host, songwriter and avid beer consumer, Mr. Chaz E. Hey, welcome back to At The Hops. The podcast that brings music and beer together for one intoxicating experience. This is Chaz E. from Nashville, Tennessee. Please allow me to introduce my good friend, my brother from another mother, the man who put North Carolina on the map, Mr. Mike Mitchell. That's me. That's me. Hey, hey, hey. And I, I love the folks in the studio. Oh nice my little God. touch. Nice little touch. Best looking audience. Isn't in... it kind of expensive uh, <sighs> supplying beer to all these folks out here? You know it, it's a little bit pricey, but they're worth it. They're they the are best worth looking, it. They're the, great. The best looking audience in podcast history. I think some of them had to wait outside last night to get it get in. Yeah, they had their sleeping bags and tents set up. You know, the, it's the neighbors don't like it, but you know what are you going to do? I can I, only have so I many. Got, I got in one of the sleeping bags. <laughs> <laughs> one of the hot chicks. <laughs> I'm sure uh, that was. Well, very... I mean, it was a hot chicken. It was cold. I needed to get warm. Well, that was kind of you, I'm sure, because you know, sometimes, like you said, you just need a little bodily warmth in life. There you go to make things happen. Nothing happened. It, no, it, it, was, it just was strictly just, survival. It, it was, that's exactly right. Sometimes survival is what you got to do. Because I'm, I'm a nice guy, I wouldn't do anything inappropriate. No, sometimes survival is all about jumping in the jumping in the sack. There you go with somebody. <laughs> Jumping in somebody's, you know what? Having a beer with them. We got three beers today and a great guest. That's a surprise. Three beers from the yeah. Cool Springs Brewery. Go ahead. I, I, I was just going to say, every time I say something, there's a pop. I hope it's not hurting your thing up there. Oh, you getting a pop on your um, headphones? Like, I'll say something and it goes, pop. It didn't do it really? that time. I'm not going to worry about it. It might as just long be in as the it, headphones. There it was again. Just as long as it's not distorting. We'll listen back and see if we've got pops everywhere. Nobody likes... I got a pop. You got a pop. <laughs> Everybody's got a pop. You got to have a pop. Even if you don't know your pop, you had a pop at there some you point. Go. Oh, what's... Oh, I was going to say, oh, Cool Springs Brewery is our beers it's a provider for today. We're going to try three beers from them. And a great guest, a young man that I met in Paris, France, named George Irwin is coming here Did you today. jump in his sleeping bag? No, not at all. <laughs> I was... I mean, you know, Paris is a romantic city, but it's not that romantic <laughs> that you're just going to well, jump in the you. sleeping bag of any strange man. No, he's not a stranger, but he's a great uh, Americana singer-songwriter. He's going to be joining us in just a few moments, and we'll try three beers with him and check out some of his songs. What's right. new with you, Mr. Mike Mitchell? Uh, not a whole lot. Just kind of hanging out and driving around and listen to some music and anything really uh sticking out in your head right now musically any you know, songs any <sighs> albums any i've been listening to a lot of john coltrane like really yeah and he recorded a lot of music he sure did i don't know how i guess i have about eight albums i don't know how many he released but... if no oh, ton there was a time if i remember right from the book chasing the train there was a point in his career where there was something going on like a strike in the music union and nobody could play in clubs. So he spent all that time recording and recording and recording and recording and he you know, recorded it constantly. Yeah. Hendrix was like that too. I mean, yeah. it was like a hobby for Hendrix to record. Yeah. Spent his time in electrical aid land, right? Studio. Then he was well, like, even before that, I mean, he would, you know, he would go to, you know, he's, he actually got famous in England, but when he went over there and he, he really wasn't that big yet, he would always find a studio and go in and jam. I tend to run away uh, from the recorder. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, you should. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good, though. <laughs> no, How's but anyway, back to Coltrane. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned a book. Chasing the Train, is really that good an, book. Is that an autobiography? No, okay. but it's a good I read two books on Coltrane, and that was my favorite. I can't remember the name. I read one that was so technical and detailed it was boring but chasing the train is a good book and if i still had it i'd give it to you but i i've yeah, I'll find it's it. been probably 15 years since i read yeah, it i'll find it and i saw a charlie parker uh biography oh, the other day that i might Char check out kansas city's charlie parker kansas city royal is doing well now but charlie parker's you know that he's great too i've read a couple books on him um 
And of course, the movie Bird by Clint Eastwood is yeah. fun to watch. So anyway, I've been in a jazz mood lately. So what album, or is it a combination well, of albums? Yeah, well, I listened to uh, Giant Step coming over. And, and uh, the, or Giant Steps. Giant Steps, with yeah. a classic... Um, a piano solo that's not too hot. Um, what's his name? Tommy Flanagan's the piano player on that. And oh, I loved I loved the piano playing oh, on that album. Listen to the on Giant Step. So he brought that in. Coltrane brought that song in, and it was so different than any. Nobody ever played something like that. And and um, Tommy Flanagan just got handed this sheet, you know, I guess of you know and of Giant Steps, which is a song very difficult to play over. And I guess he was told improvise a solo over this and if you go listen to it his solo is not that great i hear later on once he had time to practice it he played the hell out of it hmm. but if you listen go back to giant steps again listen to the piano solo and you can almost hear him in the solo him going what the hell do i do with this because it was just pretty much thrown in front of him and tommy flanagan's a amazing pianist well maybe that's why i liked it you know sometimes just the holding back it just maybe, sounds yeah. good you know well especially coltrane if you listen to the outtakes of giant steps you can hear that he had practiced that song a ridiculous amount of hours and had a lot of phrase uh, phrasing worked out i mean it's a song it was different and uh, ironically um i wrote a song based on those changes oh cool that song i do called the uh, fine way is based huh. on giant steps changes now they're be they've become what they call giant steps changes have become pretty much routine you if you're a jazz player you have to know how to improvise over those core changes but until that album that was not the case it was it was very 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 new well now where, where is uh, giant steps in his career mid-career early late or do you know i would say um Early, but not, I. Early, but more like peak because later on he gets into like the real avant-garde stuff. Yeah, and, and with I, Alice Coltrane. Some of the other albums I have uh, is Black Pearl. Uh, I don't have that. Love Supreme, isn't that? That's probably his most famous. And well, it's. I think it's the only one where he actually talks. You know, you hear him go, "I love <laughs> Supreme." Yeah, I love yeah. Supreme. I, yeah, I think. Uh, I think that's the uh, if. Somebody has a Coltrane album. That's the one they have. Is the Love yeah. Supreme? Um, uh, I, I, whatever album, is, I think Giant Steps has Naima on it. Naima is one of my favorites. All right, we've pulled up the recording of Giant Steps here, Good, and this is fast, fast. It doesn't sound maybe fast because it's played so perfectly, but. Should I fast forward to the piano solo? Yeah, that's what you were talking about. Yeah. I see. heard that on the way over. I don't remember complaining about the piano. Well, you're not going to complain about it, really, but if you listen... First of all, listen to... Holy sh Scheiser. Let's get to... I mean, Coltrane has obviously woodshedded this tune to death. Now, there was more than one piano player on this album. I mean, not at Is the same time, but... Yeah, I think there were like three people p playing piano at different times on this album, as well as drummers. He had different musicians sitting in on these different songs. Okay. All right. So he's been playing this for about two minutes now. And he's, he's just got so much to do on it. Here comes Tommy Flanagan. Stop. Stops. See, I, I don't know. I, I had no problem with this that. This part's okay. Because it's two five ones. Now. See all the stops? Yeah. Now this part's more standard. Here we go. And he just fades off into chords, finally. And well, the train comes back. Everyone should p play bad so well. No, I, you're right. <laughs> but, I mean, 
it was kind of unfair to him. He had never seen it really before. I that's think am- that's amazing to me, though, that he could do that. He that. Even got through. I would have just choked and thrown. I would have thrown the thing down and said, "Find somebody else." It it was really innovative. Those chord changes at the time. I don't want to get into the to the technical reasons why. Not that I even know them all, but you know, but it's just like you know. Let's imagine that you've only ever played a chord, a song with two chords. Imagine that. I do that all the time. And all of a sudden, somebody hands you a chart and says, well, this song has six chords in it. That's kind of what it was like, I think, for Tommy yeah. Flanagan that day. It was like, here's this. And if you, and honestly, God, Tommy Flanagan is brilliant. And if, if you want some, he's a great pianist, or was, you know, he's, he's passed away. But if you ever want some great recordings of Tommy Flanagan, there's stuff with him and Ella Fitzgerald that's just beautiful. So... Don't feel like I'm busting on Tommy. He was, it, it was just one of those things. It's just one of those things that's been recorded in posterity forever. You know, that the poor guy gets handed this amazing tune with no time to practice it. Also, the songs on that album were, were shorter. You know, most of his albums only had oh, three or four songs. Yeah, that one's a little long, quicker. And, and uh, that one had, I think, 10 or 12 songs on it. So. How is it, listening to something like that, um, how is it helping you as a songwriter? Just curious. I would say that if jazz has done anything for me in songwriting or playing is not worrying about playing it the same way every time. As long, yeah. you know, and not being too finicky about who, you know, the people that play with you not being so finicky about what they do. You know, I, I think that's one thing that I picked up from listening to, to jazz musicians is, First of all, surround yourself with good musicians yeah. and then and then let them do their thing. And so, you know, I I will never be a jazz player or a jazz writer, but I'm but, either, but 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 just understanding the way they work um uh, is really interesting to me. I I've often said that about playing with you. You you kind of give me this and I I don't know if the 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 syntax holds makes sense to everybody here but i always said mike kind of treats me like we're doing a real book gig which is like a jazz thing like when when we play together you kind of just say give me the key and hope i know the changes and say play when you feel it's time to play and i love that I yeah love that. it's a very I, jazz attitude and i think that's and that's one of the reasons why i feel that way because i know people love that you know people musicians yeah. like to play and, and I think the best gift you can give a musician is just trust him or her and say, hey, do your thing. Do your thing, yeah. And the same thing in recording. When when I record demos, you know, I I rarely tell the musicians what to play. Now, if they ask me. Then you will if, say. if You know, if they, if they don't know where to go or they don't know what to do and they say, what do you think about this? Then I'm... I'm quick to have my opinion because I hear it in my head what I what I heard when I wrote the song. Right. But when I first go in, you know, I like for the musicians to to kind of broaden it out. And and I and that's that's just another thing that I've learned from jazz musicians. Yeah. I just find too it opens up your ears a little bit. Anytime you listen to something that deviates from one four five, and I mean that in the chord saying, you know, G C D standard three chord harmony it just opens up your ears a little bit to maybe doing something different sure That's another yeah. reason to listen to like uh 20th century music and you and you actually in the process create things that never would have been created had yeah if you're using five creative minds instead of one. Ooh, that sounds that sounds almost scary five creative minds but I know what you're saying. If you're getting if you're getting a group together, right? You're right. Yeah. Exactly. I like it. That's a good thing. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up that you've been listening to Coltrane. I, I used to listen to a lot uh of John Coltrane and, and never able to uh to play Giant Steps that fast. But and I will say one other thing. Them. While we're talking about musicians and, and albums, and while I cannot you may be able to find this online, but while I cannot name the new album by Lucinda Williams, it is it's good. It is awesome. I wish I could quote the name. It's a long title, and I can't remember the. We'll find out. It's a double record too. Really? Yeah, and it has one cover. It has a J.J. Kale cover. I'm sure she did it out of to piss uh, off Clapton. 
<laughs> no, she, I'm sure she didn't have Eric in mind. She had JJ in mind. Ah, yeah, of course. Well, okay. We should get George in here, play us some songs, and talk about his playing. Yeah. he's uh, He's got a good, uh, quite a good history. Spent a lot of time playing in the Texas area as well. The Texas area, that's a huge area, but... We'll get all the we'll get all the details out of him when he gets here. All right, let's go to let's go to a word from our sponsor and then come back with Mr. George Irwin. Hey there, Mr. Chazzy. This is your old friend Jack from over on the West Coast. Listen, I just wanted to call you and thank you. I went to your site at thehops.com and from there I discovered a link to audible.com. That's right, audible.com, where they have over 100,000 audio downloads to choose from. I can listen to all my favorite books, and you know, that's good for me because I read about, well, about 1 million scripts a day, and after reading for so long, well, I'm just crazy. I don't have time to read for pleasure anymore, but with audible.com, I can listen to my favorite titles. And for clicking through your link, Chaz, they gave me a 30-day free trial membership and one free audio download. Or maybe it's because I'm a celebrity. Who knows? Anyway, got myself a good book on beer. I could be a guest on your show soon. What do you say? I already got some musical talent. Here, let me get you a little sample. All work and no play. Yeah, makes Jack a dome. All work and no play. Yeah, make sure. Click on the link at www.atthehops.com for audible.com, where you'll find over 100,000 audiobooks and more. Sign up for the free 30 day trial membership, and you'll get a free audiobook for your listening pleasure as well. All right, guess who we got in the room? Mike Mitchell. I'm in the room. Are You're you in, in the, the room? room? I'm in the room, we're all in the room, and we've got our special guest tonight, a gentleman that I met all the way in Paris, France. Can you believe that he's right here amongst us all in Nashville, Tennessee? Please welcome singer-songwriter, originally from Texas, George Irwin. Hey, hey. Hey, George. Salut. Listen. Salut, yeah. <laughs> we can speak French now. The people love you. It was so unbelievable to play an open mic night in Paris yeah. at Pop In. And then run into somebody from Nashville. I was, yeah, I mean, I guess, the, you know, I've told people, you know, that I, that I ran into you there, and they're like, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. People from Nashville are everywhere. And well, I'm like, yeah, well, but still. yeah, but uh, come on. It was still, it was like a breath of fresh air, too, because there was definitely a difference. And nothing against what, what we were hearing from the, the Parisians there. I loved everything I heard that night. Yeah. But there was like a difference when you played. Of course, it was all in English, too, so maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I, understand. I was like, I understand the lyrics to this song, finally. This song has so much meaning, comparatively. Yeah, but there was... What a great place. Pop in. I, I mean, uh, Mike, people sat there. They had a separate listening room, um, you know, separate from the bar, and it was packed the whole night. I was shocked when I when I got there. Like, it was... it was Yeah, people, like, there were kids of all ages there. Yeah. Um, from, like... 13 or younger to you know like older adults um and it was just it was packed like wall to wall and all appreciative yeah how, how your headphones sounding by the way okay pretty good i i'm i'm all on the left ear but i think that maybe it's just <laughs> the headphones yeah, I think <laughs> maybe you should see a doctor just making yeah. sure <laughs> but no absolutely right it was a eclectic crowd they all paid attention they stayed the whole night they were excited about hearing new songs yeah and even Though, like, you're, you and I did not speak a lot of French, I felt so welcomed mm -hmm. there by the, the Americans. People. Yeah, we were the two. Well, you were the Americans. Yep. There was also a Canadian there, but he was he was living there and spoke fluent French, so he kind of had a... Yeah, he has what he did. Yeah, but, I don't know what that was. But yeah, yeah, but, but, it, but yeah, we were like the, you know, the Americans, and they were extremely appreciative. And like I said, I was, you know, when I, when I first heard at this place that they had a separate room for the open mic i thought oh it's probably just a a bunch of songwriters sitting in this separate room but no it was people came down to this separate room in the bar and it was not that room was not even easy to find in the bar no it was like a <laughs> labyrinth to get in it they came down and listened. i think if you weren't drinking you probably could find well, it pretty easy it was a, it was a fire hazard yeah i had that was. thought when i went down there i was like oh 
if there's a fire, we're all going to die in here. Did they allow smoking in there? I don't think so. I think I people think. went outside to, to yeah. smoke, ironically. But so yeah. that's global. The, the in places, I mean, there there's still a lot of smoking over in Europe, but in some places, people had to go outside to smoke, which was I appreciated. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it funny how we've gotten so uh, spoiled now? Like Mike. You and I have talked about the days when we played in smoky clubs all the time, and now I can't stand it. Yeah. But there was a time when it was just, you know, standard operating procedure. You're going to. You come home and you smell like you cigarettes. S- you smell like the Marlboro Man. You didn't even question it. Like no. It was just, that was just how it was. Yeah. It, it didn't know anything about secondhand smoke. I probably was happy because I probably got paid to play a gig that night. So yeah. I was probably happy to, <laughs> to smell like smoke. So, George, you played a few gigs out there in Europe. Tell me how the whole experience was. Yeah, it was great. Um, this was sort of my first, uh, well, this not sort of, this was the first time that I played over in Europe. Um, and it was great. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't really have too much lead time in, in booking stuff. So, it was sort of sporadic. Like, the, the pop-in was an open mic. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, like we were saying, that was fantastic. Um, and then... I did manage to book a show at the Troubadour in London, which is a, a famous little dive up there where uh, Bob Dylan and Paul Simon have played. And it's kind of, it's got like a rich history that goes back, you know, well, at least that long. And uh, that was really special. It was, that was a, a fun night with a great, like, built in crowd. And I was going to ask you, they were as receptive there as. Yeah, everybody just Poppin. listened. It was, it was, it was so incredible. That's actually, that was like the case um, that I experienced across the board over, over there was in, in Paris. Everybody was just like super attentive. And in London at, at the Troubadour, anyway, everybody was just really like pin drop silent listening. Yeah. And then um, in Dublin, I just played in a pub and they were all still really great listeners. Did they, is, is there a whole nother, like, I, I, is Nashville a buzzword? When they find out you're from Nashville, does that do anything? Or, or American singer-songwriter, does that do anything? Or is it just, do you think they're just there to listen to everybody? I think they're just there to listen to everybody. Yeah. Um, people would ask where I was from, and uh, Nashville doesn't really, like... Uh, it's not about the obsession with the TV yeah, show. Yeah, they, they're not quite so, like... What about Cool Into Springs? It. Did that get anybody's attention? <laughs> cool Springs, straight from Cool Springs. Oh no! <laughs> cool Springs didn't uh, didn't even come up. Eventually, though, because I, I wanted to see a reaction, I started just telling people I was from Texas, and then they'd be like, "Oh yeah, horses and whatever." Yeah, and you are originally from Texas, yeah. right? And yeah. that's not a lie. Are, are we right. from, from where in Texas? <laughs> from uh, I, I grew up in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and then I um, I lived for. A long time playing in bands in Austin uh, before moving up here. Great area. Wow, for... that's a great music yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah. Austin, Austin's great. Did you ever see Willie Nelson over there? Um, well, you know, I saw him. Uh, I heard him sing the national anthem at a UT football game once. How was it? Or U- University of Texas football game, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Um, Do- doesn't he have an annual like a uh, uh, country? Yeah, he Woodstock. Does the, he does like the Fourth of July. Yeah. Picnic. Yeah. Um, and somehow I managed to never go to that. Um, <laughs> But I, I have heard him play. Okay. I, play. I heard him play in uh, Fort Worth at Billy Bob's, and we have a uh, other times backyard. Uh, one of the people I mean to cut you off there, uh, George. Oh, that's all right. We can get back to that in a second. I was just going to say you mentioned Willie Nelson. He's he's labeled as somebody that you sound similar to or influenced by. We have a special top six list in honor of Willie Nelson tonight. George oh. isn't familiar with the top six yet, but he will be. Uh oh. I forgot to mention that earlier, Mike. Tonight's <laughs> top six has to do with Willie. All right, I cool. like Willie. Yeah, why not? Yeah, uh, and, and 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 you're right. He does have that Texas, yeah, uh, influence in his music. Exactly, I hear, I hear that. And the strong voice, very strong <laughs> Thank voice. You. And they're gonna hear that soon. And one of your first songs, "Fixing Shit." Do you get <laughs> Do you get hell about? The I title? bet they like that over there. Well, what like, do they call shit in Paris? In Paris. Mierd. Mierd. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mierd? I said that word, actually, when I was playing at Pop and It was one of the wor- French yeah, you words did. I that said. Was, that was funny. I, I was... I was... George was kind enough to loan me his guitar, and I was not... The Gibson? Had, no, he had an... What did you have over there? It was a... Uh, it's like a little small size guild. Yeah, it was, it was great. Nice. 
But I mean, I, I tend, I tend to beat the shit out of my guitar. And I said, I beat the mirror and I think out of it. And I was trying <laughs> not to with yours cause it was yours. But I tend to like hit it and stuff. And did I, people laugh when you sit in the air? Over yeah, the they were yeah. like, oh, "Oh, he knows our words." Yeah, they, they responded to it actually. But I, yeah, I, I, I you guys full of mirror. <laughs> I was full of mirror, but I tend to beat the hell out of my guitars. They've all got scratches in them or dings. They're not my guitar until they have a ding in them. So yeah, that, I think I think all guitars should have the shit kicked out of them a little bit. That's why I like mm-hmm. Hendrix. They're made to be played. <laughs> They're they're made exactly. You don't want you. I mean, it's not really like you should beat the hell out, but you know what I mean. They should have a few. They should have some character to them, yeah. and that's all from playing and bringing them around. I hate to have a guitar I can't take somewhere. Yeah, sort of like a girl or a girlfriend or a wife. Or you <laughs> like to, to have a wife that's... you can take somewhere. That's exactly. I I I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want my wife to have a few dings in her. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, you want to take her somewhere. Oh. Hey, speaking of let's show her off. Let's yeah. go back to fixing shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to do that. <laughs> so, uh, let's play that song. Let's hear a little bit about it before we get to it. And then we'll go to our oh and our beer. Speaking of Cool Springs, Mike, all our beers tonight are from Cool Springs Brewery. Great, great. Yeah. Where yeah. where you're living now, George. Yeah, in honor of our guest, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But let's hear a little bit about the inspiration for fixing shit. And uh, and the reaction you get to fixing shit. Well, um, let's see. It's better than breaking shit. The inspiration for breaking it actually it. is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely better than than what you just said. Um, <laughs> the uh, the inspiration of, uh, for that song actually was... Uh, it came from... Like, I saw a photograph of, like, some some guy out in his workshop... And then, like, it instantly kind of, like, I just had this sort of, like, connection with that the photograph and kind of got the whole, like, feel for what was going on in there. Yeah. And uh, I can really, re- you know, I, I'm not, like, a carpenter or, like, really much of a, um, somebody goes out and, and, and builds things or, or does stuff like that all the time. But um, I've, you know, been in, in uh, that kind of situation before, and I really... And it, I think it applies to especially, you know, to making music um, where you're just kind of on your own doing your own thing. And uh, so that's that's what the song is about. It's, it's about uh, having time to yourself to just to tinker with stuff. Yeah. And that's what you do at, yeah. with your music. Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing but, I mean, no, really. I mean, you sat here and played three songs, nothing but your guitar and you. Yeah. And you fixed fixed us some shit right right here live in the studio <laughs> yeah and that is it it is like uh being a carpenter of sorts right mike there you go let's go here fixing shit and let's get to our first round of beer from cool springs brewery <laughs> incandescent corner of a workshop late on a friday night making the world a better place trying to get it right tighten up the bolt that sits up top solder that wire tight can't keep the smile off my face this might work it just might when the world starts shifting uneasy and life's too hard to understand it's sawdust and cool night breezes and fixing shit with my hands Straighten up the angle just a smidge It always goes to plan My own work at my own pace That no one else can understand Grab another beer from the mini fridge Crack open the can This is my time in my own space When I'm free to just be a man When the world starts shifting uneasy And life's too hard to understand It's sawdust and cool night breezes And fixing shit with my hands Yeah, when the world starts shifting uneasy
And we're back from fixing shit, ready for the first round of beer from Cool Springs Brewery. George you know, is just telling us. Oh, go ahead, Mike. <laughs> uh, I just, I'm not sure how that would sound. Can you imagine if you just turned on the show, didn't hear a song, back. and you said, we're just back from fixing some shit? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> what would that be? What show would that be? That'd They'd be probably like a, cut us off really quickly. An HGTV show. Well, fixing yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> the shit ain't broke, don't fix it. George is saying he's been missing out on his beer connoisseur tasting. Yeah. Since That's been a depressing in story. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I've been tasting some beers, I guess, but no. I, I mean, I like to brew, um, and I oh, just you home I, brew. I haven't brewed since I moved yet, so um, it's been a little while. Wow. You you can send us some, and we'll include it in one of our I'll tastings. Just come yeah, back and do the show with us again. I definitely will. Um, that would be cool. That would be original. That's our tasting song is coming on. Yeah. That's what you're hearing. Do not be awesome. deceived. You are hearing. No, music. I was wishing. I was wishing I could have brought something with me, but I, I haven't done it since I've been up here. That's okay. So. I've only had one guest bring us beer. Kevin Mash did. Remember, Kevin Mash brought us beer from. Where is he from? Yeah, I think so. Was it? Well, I was on that show, right? It was yeah. another show that we don't remember much about because he brought because we had beer to taste, <laughs> and then he brought us all these beers to taste. It was a long show. We had. I think it was. Uh, we'll go back and look it up. I forgot where Kevin's from. Though. Anyways, wait. Hop say oh, what is this called? Circumcision mosaic. Hop says and ale is our first beer, and we're supposed to look, do three steps with tasting this beer. And the first step is cloudy. Up. You know, it's, it's cloudy. Looking. A little bit cloudy. Yeah, we're supposed to look at it and describe it. Cloudy. Uh, it is a bit cloudy. You can't see through it. I don't know about that color, but I'm gonna call it. It's like kind of the color of wheat. I got a color. Yes. Listen to George. Go, man. I'm looking at the color chart I have. We call it uh, medium amber. Wheat. I don't know. You can pass the color oh, chart around. Oh, there's a around. color chart there. That's cool. You know, I forgot to bring it out the last couple of shows, but we have a we have a bunch of these around the room. I just forget to bring them out sometimes. Looks like it might be a deep gold. You think it's deep gold? I was said I said something amber. I don't know. I think a pale amber. Oh, that's what I said. I think. Uh oh. Nice foamy head though coming up there. And Which now is, these are pale amber is just one beyond deep gold there. Yeah, we were so I wasn't too far off. Yeah. So our second step is we're supposed to take a smell. Ooh, it's an interesting. I get a yeasty, yeasty fruity sensation. What do you guys get from this one? Yeasty fruity. <laughs> yeasty. Fruity. Doesn't sound like a good thing. Like no. I just smell wet. It doesn't. It doesn't just really have wet? much an odor. Wet. That's, wet. That's an interesting. <laughs> like interesting when a dog's smell. wet. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like wet dog. That, that is not what I smell. But you know what I mean? Kind of yeasty, kind of fruity. What about you, Mike? I, I would say fruity. Almost uh, I yeasty, think, fruity. I'm not yeah. sure about the yeasty part. But definitely, definitely fruity. Fruity. <laughs> Let's get to our third step, which is. I hope I taste. taste. Let's have a taste. What is this? The high alcohol. All this one is at uh, 8.2. It's not the highest day, but they're all pretty high today. You go from 8 <laughs> so to 10. So am I. <laughs> so here it is. They're all about 8 to 9, actually. So they're definitely a high gravity. And uh, But cheers. Enjoy. Cheers. Sante. Hmm. Sweet. I would say Ooh, sweet. Sweet. But what, wait. But after you swallow, there's sort of a... Sort of a... a almost... Oh, wait a minute. I haven't swallowed yet. Oh, <laughs> That's a that that's, that's a what saison. She said. <laughs> you got it, man. It's a, it saison. a saison. It's it's a little different than some of the saisons I've had. It's a little fruitier, I think. But definitely, it's got that after bitterness, right? A lot with it, like at the end of it, a really, I mean, it comes off fruity at first, and then after that, mm -hmm. you've got like a. I'm not sure what to describe, but that that after, not honestly after. Bittersweet? Should we call bitter. it bittersweeter? Sweet bitter? You know. I don't know. It's got. I mean, this is this is really good. And, and you know, you mentioned it when you poured it that the uh, that like there was a really big head on it, mm -hmm. and it is really super carbonated. Like it's got kind of a fruity oh, champagne yeah. kind of uh, thing going on with it. Now they say this thing should have. I'm gonna tell you what some of the things they said here. Oh, white pepper and coriander. Yeah, the pepper I'm starting to taste now in there as that after after effect. With hints of meadow flowers and white grapes. I don't know what a meadow, meadow flower is. Sure you do. I think that's what Frankenstein's monster was throwing in the lake. Meadow flower. <laughs> never, We've all known a meadow flower or two. Isn't a meadow flower like something that uh, is supposed a, to represent something else? Maybe. Never met a flower I didn't like. 
Flavors of lemon, peach, grapefruit, and pineapple. And esters exacerbate the fruity hops. I get the, here, unripened berries, lemons, and white grapes. I get the berries, definitely, and then some kind of like aftertaste of I think something. the grapes are what's giving me the champagne vibe. Oh, man. George, hitting it on the head. Ding, ding, ding. We need a bell. Don't we, Mike? <laughs> we got some sound effects. We don't have a There's bell that goes seven ding, clicks ding, ding. to get to the bell. Yeah. I guess we have. Wait, well, we have this one. Hey, there, there you go. He hit it on the head. <laughs> Not bad, though. But like you knew this. it was a Saison right away, George, right? Well, I knew that going into it. Oh, well, it said in the title, but still. But, but when you tasted <laughs> but no, it. It's, it tasted in the, in the Saison family to me. I've made, gotcha. I've made a Saison before, and so like, uh, I knew what to expect. What m- makes a Saison when you make it? Is it? In, I think it's the yeast. Is that right? I think okay. mostly it's the yeast and, and probably the, you know, the other ingredients a little bit. But I, I'm just, from my tasting, it seems like all the Saisons seem to have uh, uh, seem to be very, a lot of local fruits or produce are present in the Saison. I mean, you know, it's also say farmhouse ale and it almost seems like, yeah, it seems like thing, like products you'd find around the farm, like fruits, mm-hmm. berries and, and things like that are going into them. Uh, maybe it seems traditionally like yeah, that's I, the case. And I could be wrong, but maybe... I don't know. I want to say like maybe they came from. Uh, Come on, closer like, to the mic. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe You're they came from like uh, open container fermentation. Oh yeah, that but I, I don't know. So you never know what's what gets in them. Nah, that's true. I like that. Hey, well, I want to talk to you about Songwire. Right? Is that the name? Oh yeah. You just mentioned it. Now you give us a whole subject to talk about. Yeah, Brilliant. I have a lot of friends who are song wires. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a little close to that that word songwriter, isn't it? It is pretty close. So what's the song wire? And we want to plug that a little bit. You're going to start doing that, right? Yeah. So uh, I've been um, getting it ready, and it, it's basically it's just I, you know being a, a songwriter writer here in Nashville, um, really doing that with most of my time, I, I find that I write bunches of songs every week. And wow. at the end of the month, I've every got... Every week? Yeah. How, How many, many songs a week, week do you write? I write like two a year. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say I have, I have, you know, like a an average week, I've got three finished songs. Wow. Wow, that's pretty um, prolific. And pro- that is. Prolific. And, but, you know, like a lot of those I, I might throw away. But at the end of the month, I've usually got a couple that... Uh, I think are, are pretty good and short of having any kind of like publishing deal. Cause I don't have that right now. And, um, anything like making a record or putting out, putting out anything more formal, I was thinking about, you know, I, I would love to get these tunes to people that would like to hear them. And, um, so I, I came up with this idea to offer this song wire subscription where I'll send you, basically just a work tape of the song, but it'll be a good take. Um, and then there'll also be some album art for it, uh, or like single art, I guess, if, as it were. Yeah. Uh, cause I, I'm a designer too. And I like to make, make the visuals, um, the lyrics, and then like some kind of like insider's perspective on writing songs in, in Nashville and then a little bit behind the song itself in the process. So it's kind of like a, it's a, it's really like a big kind of content rich newsletter uh, based on songwriting with a focal point of a song that's been written just now in Nashville before anything's ever happened with it. Um, so that's, that's what it is. And, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to launch it in the next couple of weeks here. So did songwriting bring you to Nashville? Is that why? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm constantly trying to write better songs, but, uh, but it's that's that's what I enjoy the most. Now, being from Austin, uh, and we I think we're going to be talking about Willie Nelson later. But yeah, you know, interestingly, Willie left Nashville to go to Austin, <laughs> and uh, and so you were already in Austin. And so what what about Nashville was more interesting to you than being right there in Austin? That, that is a very big music center. Austin's a, a fantastic music city, and uh, I loved it. I lived there for 15 years, and I played in bands for at least 10 of those years out and around town. And um, and there's a there's a fantastic music community there too. I mean, I I think that 
what happened was I just started getting really into kind of the uh, songwriting side of things and not necessarily wanting to perform out. Because I, I feel like Austin's more of a, a live music city, whereas here in Nashville, there's more music industry and, and ways for your songs to do other things other than just perform them yourself. How do, how do uh, the musicians in Austin, what do they think and say about Nashville? I mean, is there a high level of respect for Nashville? Do they look down on Nashville? What, what, is, the, what is their impression? You know, it's really hard to say for Austin as a whole. Um, I think some people do really respect Nashville and Austin. Um, for example, I was a member of the Austin Songwriters Group for a long time. And I, actually, I think I still am, technically. Um, I went to their symposium last year, and it was great. And uh, they really respect Nashville folks and have Nashville people come down and, and uh, act as, as mentors and, and uh, lead workshops and whatnot. Um, but then there are other people that kind of think that Nashville is a little too commercial, a little too slick, um, and they just want to get up and make a ruckus and... Uh, do their thing, which people love, and, and you know that's it's awesome. You know, you can go out and hear great music any night you want in Austin. And they still want to keep it weird in Austin. Yeah, that's why the, there is a focus on, on the, keeping it weird. Yeah, which, right. That which is does, and weird slogans, doesn't necessarily right? get on the radio all that much. That's an interesting point, though. You're right. It doesn't always, even though that's part of the the forte. I mean, Austin all kind of has that slogan, just like Portland does, right? But yeah. It doesn't always make for the, uh, the the song that gets played. Yeah. And that's why I never listen to the radio. I think weird Seriously. stuff is good. Yeah, but the radio right. bores me. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it's funny. I, I hear every once about it. Every, I, it's it's hard to say. I, I've been blessed to have uh, like a young daughter in my life who makes me listen to the radio. And um, every once in a while I hear a song that I think is an absolute gem. But then I hear, you know, a bunch that are, like that group Florida Georgia Line or whatever they're called. That's some of the worst shit I've heard in my entire life. Have you heard that? I, I've heard of them, but not not their yeah, songs. Have, like, have you heard Dirt? No. What's Dirt? It's their like n- maybe one of their newest singles, and I think that's a great song. Oh, I haven't heard it. Dirt's yeah. good. I just heard uh, Let It Roll or I don't know what yeah. it was. I think it they're developing quite a, yeah. a following. Actually, I haven't heard them, but uh, I've read. I think there's some really good things about. I think there's some really talented guys, but. Um, but it's definitely right up in there in that like kind of pop bro country thing that's that's going on that it's kind of it just felt like it was done around a conference table to me but I mean uh, there's you know it didn't feel like I was hearing an artist just write a song it felt like it was formula I don't know and that that kind of I feel yeah. like I was getting sold a commercial or, <laughs> you know, it should have been like selling me some siding or something right. that's odd yeah I think there's a fine line to walk between making something so you know keep austin weird is great but, yeah but if it's too weird nobody yeah. wants to listen to it but if it's too commercial nobody wants to listen to it it's that it's hitting that right uh thing in between i always thought that austin city limits it was a very tasteful show oh absolutely i don't think i ever heard uh an artist on that show that i didn't enjoy that's that's sort of the, yeah. the brilliance of a person like say lyle lovett or someone speaking of mm. that area that is kind of kind of off kilter but still mainstream at the same time or, or on the pop side like a david bowie it's like what he does is so bizarre but yet it's still mainstream it's like how do you do that how do you blend yeah. those two things how do you stay weird but also be commercial at the same time right that's, that's an amazing i mean thing. that's the that's the quest for the holy grail that's what i'm doing yeah that's what i'm trying to do and though you know one thing you mentioned about songwire which i think is great is somebody hears a song right when it hot off the press right nothing's happened with it and yeah, I mean, it could it could go on to become a radio hit. It could go on to become thrown in the trash, um, or it could be like on my solo record, or who knows? It could be in a commercial someday. But you know, you'll get the chance to hear it first, just straight from your yeah. email. That's one thing I loved, and we did it on a podcast. We listened to three versions of one of your songs, "Red Hair Gray." We listened to you play it solo, and then two different people make recordings of that. And you've had a few songs done by other bands mike and i i loved hearing that progression of what other people did with it or just yeah. the, the song grow it was great yeah it, it's it's fun to to hear other folks do it or or even when you're doing the record but you've got different musicians you know you right you, you have band a play it and then next week you play with band b and 
it can be a totally different sounding song. And that, I love to do that, to play with different people yeah. like that. And Songwire gives people that opportunity to hear it. This is it. This is the... the this is the raw state. The raw... Exactly. This yeah. is the seed that's going to blossom into whatever. Or it might just... <laughs> you, may, you may never hear it again, but yeah, you might. I'm sure you've written songs that you've you've only played a couple. I've, I have yeah. a few that I've never played. I'm like uh, After I played it live once, I thought, that one well, should that, never be played again. <laughs> that is the best thing about Writer's Night. Mm -hmm. It's been the most helpful thing for me as a writer is when I take the songs out and I find out basically if they're any good. I yeah. mean, because you're playing them in front of strangers who owe you nothing. And, you know, the worst thing that for your song can be dead silence. Yeah. And I don't mean necessarily whether they applaud or not. You usually will get the applause. Right. Yeah. But if you walk off the stage and you say hi, and all these people have an opportunity to say, I like that song, and they don't say shit, <laughs> you're in trouble on that song. But That's the greatest thing. feeling is when you walk off stage and somebody walks up to you and actually yeah. knows the title. Oh, you know? yeah, that's great. You're like, and that, that worked. And, and, you know, and that, that should tell you something. That, that's a good song. Yeah. That, that's, that's probably a good song. That's a very huh. good point. How you th what do you think of this beer as you I like continue it. to taste it? I, I do like it. I keep tasting more of the melange of... of My gla like our glasses and, are empty, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, you can refill it. Well, there, I don't want to refill. i got to drive later. Well, I, I don't I've got two more beers and a car to drive. That's that's a song title. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Let me write that down. That's pretty good. Two, two more, more beers, beers and, and a car, car to, to drive. drive. I like that. Trying to get home alive. We could rhyme that. <laughs> Should we go and... Uh, Higher Stakes, you're, you're the second song you played for us. Yeah, speaking of, of songs that you've you tested at Writer's Nights, yeah. this is not one of them. Higher Stakes. That now sounds like a restaurant. It, <laughs> yeah, I, think. I went over to or, Higher Stakes last night. Man, or, they had some really good food in there. Maybe it's Flay's a, new place. It's a it's Bobby Fray, uh, Flay's new catering company. Yeah. Higher Stakes. Like higher stakes, stakes for socks. Stakes it's for out of Denver, Colorado. Everybody that's everybody's stoned that's <laughs> delivering the, the food. It's Higher Stakes. Tell us about that song a little bit, though, about the brand inspiration. New. It's brand, oh, new. brand new. You read the lyrics. I had to turn on a light for you. Yeah. You know what? Keep it dark here. <laughs> so I didn't even... Doing. I wasn't sure I was going to play that one tonight, but yeah, no, it. I wrote that one yesterday, I think. And, no kidding. Um, and uh, I uh, don't know... <laughs> I haven't thought about it too much, other than, you know, I, I do feel like coming here to Nashville, pursuing music, writing songs... Uh, as my main thing right now is like this is my full time full time job that's not really paying the bills yet is a it's it's a big bet and uh, I've been wanting to vocalize that somehow but um, I've also just been enjoying the hell out of it so I feel like I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing and there's something to that I think so that's that's what that song's about yeah James Taylor said it best if I can remember lie is see. The secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot what song The secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. That's and that's <laughs> true. That is very true. Very yeah. true. All right, let's go enjoy uh, Passing Old Time with Higher Stakes and George Irwin. <laughs> Making bigger bets Putting it all on the table Living no regrets Peeling off the warning label I'm playing to win This time I ain't bluffing Throwing safety to the wind Baby, tonight it's all or nothing Take to the air like they know how to fly Whatever gets me there's what I'm gonna try You can tell me you think I'm crazy You say maybe I should hit the brakes But being failing ain't gonna faze me Life is richer at higher stakes, higher stakes 
sharks There's no room for doubt Yeah, I'm gonna make my mark Gonna let it all hang out You can tell me you think I'm crazy You say maybe I should hit the brakes But fear of failing ain't gonna face me And Mike's digging up the second beer from Cool Springs Brewery. Mike, what's the title of that one again? Hop Brutality. Yeah, Hop Brutality, an American Double Imperial IPA. I'm excited about this one because I I know the IBUs are 128, and I love that's a that's a that's a shitload of IBUs. Put it that way, right? I mean, George, you know, you brew beer. That's all. That's high. Yeah. That's going to be a bitter beer. I, Did I don't you know mention the... the alcohol content. 9.8. I love Oof. Imperial IPAs. Yeah, me too, I, man. I, I, you know, if you give me a choice between an IPA and an Imperial IPA. You take the double. Uh, I'll take the double, you know, alcohol content, not, you know, not the deciding factor. Put the hops it's, experience. Well, it's, it's the, um, I think it's the balance because in the double, you've got twice the malt there and the yeast eats it up for twice the alcohol. But um, because of all the malt, I think it balances the the hops a lot better than a single IPA. You know, I'm, I'm a excuse me, but hire I'm, that man. That I'm perfect. amazed. Yeah, hire that man. I'm amazed at the folks that we've had on the show that know so much about beer, and it's accidental. I mean, you 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 don't bring them on the show for their beer knowledge. You bring no. them on the show for their songwriting. But yet we bring <laughs> these people on, and they know all this all these things about beer. Maybe all songwriters. Just Drink naturally a beer. know a lot about beer. I don't know anything about beer. Yeah, I think you do, Mike. I mean, you, you definitely Well, I do have... now after being educated on At The Hops. Well, that's, <laughs> to be honest with you, you and I have been learning this from um, show one to now. We, we, well, we're that's not beer. True. You and I have been learning about all this together because I, I'm not a beer aficionado at all. I just know I enjoy drinking it. So as we started the podcast, I said, let's make it a part and learn about it as we go along. I would love to have on this show every week an expert, but we haven't had that. I don't know. We're, do, we're doing pretty good tonight. So we're doing our... Yeah, George, <laughs> you want to come George back every week? George is throwing out all these terms. Oh, man, I, I'm expert? definitely not a beer expert, but I I, uh, I do enjoy beer, and I, I remember yeah. what I enjoy. But we have interviewed a few great brewmasters on this show. From Fat Bottom, from Tennessee Brew Works, and yeah, all the way yeah. out in Chicago. Well, that we was to, that was intentional. Yeah, and we went to Chicago too to Dry Hop Brewing. Oh, I might cool. get didn't go with me, but I went. And you were so impressed with Fat Bottom, you went back and got married. I got married to Fat Bottom. Well, at Fat Bottom, yeah, I had that's my right. wedding was at you Fat Bottom. You told me about that. That's yeah, great. that's awesome. It was fun. And tonight <laughs> we were both wearing the shirts. Yeah, I, had, I took you my yours on earlier. Fat Bottom Brewery, and we had a Fat Bottom Knockout IPA, which is extremely. Uh, you had that earlier, George. What did you think of it? I it's, thought it was a good IPA. Yeah, it's it's real full of the. That's almost like a uh, double IPA because it's it's kind of kicking in the butt, uh, as far as flavor goes, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, they're all about. That's kind of his thing there at at um, Fat Bottom Brewery. I just forgot the brewmaster's name. Frank. No. Fat. <laughs> Fat. I just realized I should have played a different song if we're talking about Fat Bottom Brewery. What song? 
I've got a song <laughs> about Fat Bottom. I've got a song called uh, uh, A Little Bit of Jiggle. I think we should do it because <laughs> we decided this was a Fat Bottom night. We had the uh, Fat Bottom sweatshirts, the Fat Bottom yeah. beer. So I think we ought to do the Fat Bottom jiggle. Wait, the Fat Bottom. I like it. But we're now we're on a Cool Spring. Well, cool Springs is kind of a competing brewery, but I don't think they really compete here. I think. They kind of live in harmony, all the breweries here. Uh, most of them seem to. I mean, it, yeah. it's sort of like a regional thing, it seems like. Almost. I think so. Well, let's talk about this. We got hot brutality here. I, I'm looking at it. I, I, I broke the rule and drank it a little early. That's all right. You can do that. And now I'm going to say this is almost deep amber, too, or amber brown. It's foggy, too, like the last one, and, and a nice little sudsy head on top. It's just a hair darker than the last one. Yeah, just yeah. a hair. Now I can say what I said before, I guess. It's uh, but, wow, deep what gold. S- no, this really is deep no, gold. No, it's the other way. Oh, is it darker? <laughs> oh, was the other one pale That's amber? That's what she said. Other way. But it's, I thought the other one was pale gold. This, Excuse me. I just took a smell, man. That's It's bliss. I mean, that's that, that's like that beautiful hop, malty, grapefruit grapefruit you're yeah. getting that on the head oh my god man that's like you know this is what i want to drink for breakfast right go here. ahead <laughs> smell the cascade yeah you are, you are drinking it for breakfast didn't you just get up i did i did yeah just a couple <laughs> hours ago i get up just in time for the, for show. the show those are your pajamas <laughs> it is man i sleep in this i do sleep in my jeans a lot it annoys my wife <laughs> She goes, I bet it does. She goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm sleeping cowboy style. <laughs> and she hates that. And, I bet um, she does. My daughter recently said that, too. She said, Dad, downstairs, sleeping cowboy style. You're not sleeping with her, though. You're you're only sleeping no, with was, your wife. No, I was sleeping on the couch, but I have my jeans on. And she said, he's sleeping cowboy style. That's what I always <laughs> call it when you leave your jeans on. Oh, do you man. have your cowboy boots on? I don't know. I do have cowboy boots, but I don't wear them because I don't walk. I don't. I don't want very, to be a cowboy. I don't want to be a cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't maneuver well in them. George, you got them on. You yeah. do all right. Yeah. I actually, you're talking about sleeping in your jeans and, and then we're asking about boots and I've got these boots on. and I'm taking is, a picture of your boots. This is probably not something that I should put this, on a recording. We can but cut it out, but this will be This will it. be the first picture of a cowboy boot on At The Hops. But uh, I was at my friend's bachelor party down in, in Austin. Oh, this is getting good. And... Uh, we, you know, we went out and, and it was three in the morning or something. Yeah. And, uh, we went, we got back to the hotel room and I was, everybody was passing out and I was passed or not passed out, but I was like, I was like laid out on the hotel bed and, uh, apparently, well, apparently I guess I was, I was the one who did it, but I, I had been calling the front desk to try and get some assistance removing my cowboy boots <laughs> and I got a call from my wife at who three had, in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who she was with her girlfriends and yeah, had managed, what they were doing. Managed to like Stories they were in a hot tub and oh, and, well, wow. and she stood up and managed to get like How whacked, many girls whacked the on the tub? head <laughs> with a fan blade. Oh and, now the story's going uh, she's gonna kill me because I'm talking about this right now. But anyway, so she had to go to the emergency room and her friends took her there and she's calling me to get insurance information and I'm like, That's great, honey, but nobody from this hotel will take my boots off. You know, and like wasn't that kind of a low fan? Well, I don't know. Uh, I mean, whole... you stand up in the hot tub and you get your head <laughs> hit. With a... I would check on that. I believe they were doing something else. I think it, it was... was three in the morning <laughs> and they were in the hot tub. But like I, don't on believe, shoulders? I don't believe that about the fan. I'll just tell you, I've not met your wife, but I'm telling you, that that just doesn't sound right to me. You're too trusting. <laughs> A hot tub fan accident. That doesn't happen often. It, uh, it was it a, just doesn't. I mean, uh, it was you, a poorly placed hot tub or fan. <laughs> yeah, you could yeah. get elect. You know, those fans are electric. You could yeah. get electrocuted. It's electric. Let's taste this. George is tasting the beer. Let's all taste it and tell us. Tell us. Tell the world in podcast language. So did opinion. did oh, you I ever get your boots taken off? By the way, no, I slept cowboy style. Oh, right. Yeah, cowboy style. <laughs> just like Cheers Chaz. the cowboy style. <laughs> I didn't know you had cowboy boots. I do. Uh, I'd like I got to some, see him sometime. I wore them one night playing at the Commodore, and I remember Stan Fox was there, and he goes, Chaz, you're wearing cowboy boots. I must have looked way out of place. In Nashville? No way. No, just in Chazville, I looked out of place, because I, I don't wear cowboy boots. I always wear like pretty common shoes. Do you have spurs? That jingle, jangle, jingle? No. But I, I'll wear them. You want me to put them on later? Yeah, I'd like to see I, you in cowboy boots. I'll tell you spurs? a funny 
It's not no, they're not <laughs> Spurs. But this is not really a funny story. But I will tell you this: my daughter once was here, and she has cowboy boots that light up. She loves them. And we were going to see a hockey game one night. And she said, "Dad, it's Cowboy Night. You got to wear your boots." And I said, "Okay." So I did, and um, I'm not very good driving my car when I have them on because I have a stick shift, and I can't seem to gauge. You have to the, lift your foot rather than just. You I know, don't know. I can't seem to get. You have to hip, lift your whole leg. Yeah, I can't seem to get the clutch coordination right when I got those boots on. And I remember I was pulling into the parking lot, and I kept like, uh, mm. you know, you know, one of those parking lots where the guys like going, "Come on in!" And I, you, know, you got to pay him ten bucks or whatever. They're flagging you in at a sporting event, and I kept like gunning the gas, you know, wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong. And he and he thought I was a total asshole, and I was. You are. Saying, <laughs> yeah, like it's not me. It's the boots. <laughs> I was saying it's not me. I'm wearing these boots and I can't feel the clutch. <laughs> but I think you thought I was being a total dick. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm gunning this bitch, man. I'm driving a Honda Civic and I'm trying to really get up your, get in your case. But anyways, I, I haven't worn them yeah. since that night. But I have cowboy boots. I've got cowboy I usually boots wear, too. Um, if you want to know, I usually wear shoes from Echo, Echo.com. Anyone know that site? Oh, uh-uh. yeah. Yeah, see, George knows Echo. I know the- Comfortable shoes. Yeah. Those look like house shoes. shoes. I've seen those. Yeah, I look like an, a 40-something-year-old man, which is what I am. <laughs> Don't get excited, ladies. I look old. So this what beer's pretty good. But the beer's pretty good, yeah, speaking of that. Uh, you know, this is the, probably the best show yet. We've talked about hot tub full of young ladies. <laughs> We've talked about Yeah, can we beer? go back to that? Yeah. <laughs> I almost How wanted... many ladies was in, was in the oh, yeah. Sorry, honey. <laughs> exactly. Let's talk back to the the hot tub full of ladies. <laughs> How many ladies were in the hot tub? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. uh, I, I I don't you know I don't mean to to you know nose into your life, but this no, but whole hot tub thing sounds suspicious. Must, the fan have... he doesn't know how many. People were in the hot tub. If I knew my wife was in a hot tub full of ladies, I would have run over there right away. <laughs> For you to be so like laid back there, like whatever, you must be the man. But George. they were in different cities. Now my, oh, different cities? Yeah, more or less. I, I don't know. We were in the same area, but... He no. was in Fort Worth. She was in Dallas. I was more concerned about getting my boots removed. I don't know. <laughs> I would have been like, you're in a hot tub full of ladies. I'm coming over right now, right? <laughs> yeah. What I mean, yeah, yeah. But he couldn't get his boots off. Well, That's why he didn't go. <laughs> if he could have got his boots off, he went right sounds over. Like, you can't get in like a hot tub with boots. the movie Die With Your Boots On? Isn't that the... <laughs> swim with... I don't know. No. I mean, Gotta, a good hot tub will ruin a good pair of boots. Oh, yeah, man. Should we do the top six tonight? I'm yeah, let's enjoying do it. hot tubs more than the top six. The top six hot tubs. Tonight... Oh, wait, we got to hear the uh, the top six... Ladies in hot tub stories. No, let's go to our theme song. Our, we got to hear the little. Here we go. Top six is coming up. George, he doesn't know this, but. We do a top six list pretty often on this show. We discuss some sub. We take a list from the internet of top a top count. We always go to the six because we like six, right, Mike? Yeah, I love six. Forget top ten. The six are the most important ones, right? Right. And do, you, what, do you need to explain why you picked six? Beer comes in a pack of six. I was going to say, there it sounds like a go. six pack. Or we could have a... Th- that, George knew it! Or we could have a top 12. Oh, yeah. The most nights I that's what I have most <laughs> nights. So tonight, in our, because I know one of your influences and what is Willie Nelson. All right? That, yeah. So we have... It's inescapable. Theboot.com. Did is you it, see Willie on the Rolling Stone a couple of months, a couple of weeks ago? No. Will, oh, yeah. It was a great picture of Willie. I didn't see it either. And he has a new album, by the way. He always has a new album. Yeah, I'll he does. Check it out. What, and this one is different, though, because it's newly written. Uh, Willie songs. Huh. Oh, I like yeah. to hear it. Yeah, it's yeah. not bad. No, it's you have bad. it. Have a copy. Yeah, yeah. I like to listen to it. This list comes from theboot.com. Have chosen their top Willie Nelson songs. And we're going to talk about the top six of those. Are you ready for number six? Or do you want to take a guess? A guess for what number six the boot chose? 
Yeah. No, I don't want to take that guess. All right, well, listen. We'll just go listen. All right. Anyone know this one? Yeah. <laughs> Whiskey River. Of course. Of course. There you go. Whiskey Li- Uh, Wait. Yeah, Whiskey River, right? Maybe not a bad number six choice. Uh, Willie he, loves to smoke pot. He didn't write this. <laughs> he did it on the top of the White House, right, apparently. He didn't write this song. I didn't know that. But but it's been associated with him forever. And, and they, oh, shit. He kept playing. Don't Crazy. That. No, that was close. But I mean, I George on my mind. One. Oh, he did a recording of that too, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he like you say, he's he's recorded everything. What do you think about uh, Whiskey River? I like that. I song. love that song. Yeah, I like. So it. that's a good I, one. I, I, I love his version of that song. That's that's the definitive one. So it, I don't right. I don't even know who else has done it. Uh, yeah, I don't either. Let's go to number five. Well, was that released oh, like in the early seventies? I got nineteen seventy eight. I don't know as a date. Nineteen seventy eight from okay. Willie and the Family Live. That's, I don't, that's I don't the know year what, I was born. Wow, I was ten years before you. Not that it makes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, it's not like it's a race. <laughs> no one's racing to be born. But I just thought that was ironic. Yeah, they are. Oh, they are. It's great to be born. It's from a race Willie, to the grave. Yeah. Oh. Race to the Grave is a song title. Yeah. <laughs> Willie and the Family Live was the album that uh, came from, I guess, or was most known for. It's by Johnny Bush. What a name. Johnny Bush. <laughs> I wonder if he's related to Debbie. <laughs> George W. Bush. I don't know. Let's go to number five. Oh, yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. That was a good album. From Redheaded Stranger. That may be my favorite Willie album. Yeah. 1975, Redheaded Strangers, a concept album. Do you know the story there? No, behind do you? that album? Tell me, do you know? I bet George does. He uh, recorded that and took it to the label, and they thought it was just a demo. They said, okay, when you get finished, bring it back. And Willie said, I am finished. <laughs> they didn't want to release it. You know, listen to that, and, and there's one of these clips that we're going to play later that... Um, the recordings are so organic. There's one of these clips, and I can't remember which one it is, but his guitar is even slightly out of tune. I, I, I don't say out of tune, but not perfectly intonated, but in a way that I love because it's just organic. It's just, this is a recording of a real guy playing guitar. You know what I mean? No bullshit. Oh, yeah. I mean, and he's a hell of a guitar player, too, Willie. Yeah, and he, he sings is. the same way, offbeat a little bit. But, I, I mean, I, I was watching some of these videos. And I didn't realize what a player really is. He can play the, the hell out of his guitar. He just plays whatever he wants. It's awesome. Yeah, I, exactly. Should we go to number four? You guys ready? Any more comments on Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain? Great song. 75. Let's go to number four. Angel flying too close. Oh, I love this one. This is one of my favorites. This is the one I think with the guitar. No. Not perfect in tune. And I patched up your broken wings. What's that called? Angel, Angel flying too close to the ground. Thank you, George. Beautiful song. From uh, an album called Honeysuckle Rose in 1980. It's um. And that was a movie too, right? Honeysuckle Rose. Yeah, it was a very um. Oh. He emotion- was in the movie. It's a movie about um women getting together in hot tubs. <laughs> 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 I think, right? Hot tub time machine. I, th- I think George is going to be it in a little a, bit of trouble I, after this you might, episode. You might say I'm going to be in hot water. It says here, yes. It says, a bittersweet memory of uh, women in hot tubs. <laughs> and, and, and the time I couldn't get to the hot tub because Willie had his boots on and couldn't get them off. That's what the song about. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read what it's really about. It's a beautiful song, though, right? I mean, Did he write that one? I think so. Uh, oh, let's see, let me see what it says here. Perhaps I believe he did. The saddest song Willie has ever written and mm-hmm. recorded. I he did, wrote it. He did. Tells the story of the healing power of love and the bittersweet memory that remains when the healing is done and it's time to move on. And that they ended a sentence in a preposition, but that's okay. Let's go to number three. How about number Grammar three? Grammar police. I know. <laughs> that's me. Every time I drink a few beers. Number three. On the road again. I've heard this. Also from Honeysuckle Rose. 
This was like the theme song for every road trip I ever took with my family growing up. Yeah? Played a lot. So you have any brothers or sisters? Going to that hot tub once again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have two younger sisters. Are they musicians, singers, or? No, most of my family actually are uh, visual artists. Oh, cool. Really? That's interesting. My mom right. uh, is a painter. Really? Yeah. My younger, my youngest sister is a painter. Um, right before I went over to Europe, I went. She lives in Manhattan and had her first art show up Showing. there. Showing, all right. Yeah, and uh, and it was the weekend that Dixie and I were. Dixie's my wife's name, and it was the weekend that we were up there, um, and we got to go, and it was it was pretty great. Great, cool art, artist did you, family. Did you like yeah. Manhattan? Did you enjoy it? Uh, I love New York. Yeah, me too. I I forget that I like it. Like I kind of don't like giant cities like i love the size of nashville yeah it's like but, a small town gone big but i got up there and i was you know overwhelmed for two days and then i was like and then i just really loved it i love yeah. it in new york too i just love that you can find anything there I, I i didn't live live there but i did a contract for work my day job and i spent about eight months there with two mm -hmm. other computer geeks and um we were all into different things but every night we could all find our niche in New York. Everything is there. Mm -hmm. You can be into the weirdest thing, and you'll find your niche. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, Lou Reed. You can yeah. be into a, you know the Velvet Underground finds it underground. You know, finds I remember niche there. That's that's true. Like I I um I did an internship up there when I was in college. So I was up there for three months, and I was doing a delivery. Like a, a something got misdelivered to where I was working, and I had to try and find the place where it was supposed to go. And I went up like some elevator and walked out into this like hole in the wall place that's maybe two times the size of of this room here. Which right, I'll just I don't who know. knows. We'll take this hole in the wall. It, the it, hole it's in pretty the small, wall. but it's like it was covered like like floor to ceiling, um, like models, uh, like model airplane kits and model tank kits and model like this was just like this guy's like world of models that he. Uh, he was running there. And so that was the wrong place. So I went upstairs and it was like this dojo for some kind of weird, like stick fighting Kung Fu thing <laughs> <laughs> that I had never seen these, these kind of weapons before. It, so it's, it's just New York. I mean, yeah, anything, it's, it's wild. It, anything you want to find is there. It's, it's amazing city. It really is. All right, let's go see what number two is on the Willie Nelson list. I think Mike predicted this. Crazy. I figured that'd be number oh, yeah. one. <laughs> Mashugana! Crazy, one of the greatest country songs ever written or recorded. Number 85 among the 500 greatest songs of now, all time. Uh, I've never yeah. heard this before. The lady that... No, oh, with your, with no, I'm just kidding, sorry. Oh, yeah. who, who recorded that for him? That Patsy Klein? Patsy. Patsy. You know, Patsy did not want to record that song. She what made like her it. change her mind? Huh. Her, per, her manager said, well, I think you should do it. I think he convinced her when she was in a hot tub with her friends. And I, also, I think right. it was released after she passed away, isn't it? There's no way I can after get this cut was, out. No, after she was killed, I think Crazy came out. Her I, version of Crazy. No, that's not true because she sang it live. So forget that, folks. <laughs> her version of Crazy. I've heard that. That sounds like something my therapist said. Your version of Crazy. Is <laughs> Another line for a song. Oh, yeah, man. Your version of crazy. Yeah, it's your version. I am your version of crazy. Oh, my. Ooh. Yep. He's, he's doing it. Should we go to some? You better uh, write that and, before Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad because that, that, time, that hot tub story keeps going, but it's only because <laughs> forever that will be just like this song, always George. on my mind. Is this number one? Yeah, number one. Always. Sitting in that hot tub, you're always on my mind. He didn't write this either, though. I was going to say, there's not too many songs that Elvis has done that I would... Oh, he did that. Elvis did it, right? That I would yeah. say that somebody else did better, but I like Willie's version. Sounds I more agree. honest than Elvis. I agree. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Willie. I mean, after all these years, he's still going strong, and he loves to, he loves to be on the road. He loves to smoke pot. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I would... Yeah. Well, have you? I'm surprised. I'm not surprised, but when we were talking about a list of Willie songs, like one of the ones that I thought of immediately was "Roll Me Up and Smoke Me When I Die." Yeah, 
That didn't one, even make one of the have you read recent ones. Have you read that book? Oh no! Is it is that the title for his book? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. I haven't read it, but yeah, it's his latest book. Or I don't know. I don't know how many books Willie's written, but this is an autobiography, I guess. Have but, you read it, um, Mike? You, you read a lot, Mike. No, I haven't read it. I, if I catch it in the library, I might get it. But uh, I have read a biography of Willie, which is really good. Good and, stuff. And I'm trying to think of the, uh, you know, he had a farm not too far from here. And I, I'm trying to think of the community that it was in. But I used to drive through there every day on my way to work. And he, it was a pig farm. He actually, he got fed up with Nashville and he just said, screw it. And he actually bought a farm outside of Nashville. And I can't think of the name of the community, but he lived up there for, I don't know, a few years. And I think the house caught on fire or something. And he finally decided, and that's when he moved to Texas. Hmm. And uh, I wish I could think of the name of that community. It's, it's, it's. It's north of Nashville. Not real close. When we're in Bellevue, is it Bellmead or not one of those? No, it's up. It's like way good, up. Oh, in the, it's way up in the sticks. Or, it's way yeah. up in the sticks. Red something. Oh, Red, I, don't I don't know. But anyway, so anyway, just a little bit of willy history for you, all you willy folks history. out there. Well, there it is. Always on my mind, and that is the top six. Willie Nelson songs. Red something. Six. Red. You are Red something. Six. Need top more, George? Of that? Of the, top the IPA? Six. I want to try. Yeah, I want to have a little more of the IPA, I think. Is that it? Uh, First beer? Uh, oh, yeah. The, 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 the there we go. Mike's got it. Mike's got it. Yeah, yeah that is really good. I mean, Thanks it's got one. a real good balance of hops and uh, malt. It's like a little more say. easy drinking than some uh, I'll take another, double IPAs. I'll more of that, too, Mike, if it's... If Mike doesn't mind pouring. And then we'll go to... Uh, George is a real drinker. I like that about George. I yeah. mean, we drank some together in Paris. <laughs> Great. But, you know, we both... You know, it was it was good. It, it really was... Uh, it was really an awesome night, though, to meet you there because... Oh, yeah. I mean, it was like home all of a sudden when you got up and played. I, I, I can't tell you guys. I mean, there was all these people playing and speaking French, and I love that, too. But all of a sudden... George, you get up there and you're like, I'm from Nashville. I don't know any French. And <laughs> so you hadn't met him before he was on stage? No. Okay. And, and yeah. after he got off stage, I said, I, I was like, I gotta go meet this guy. He's yeah. my... Did it scare the shit out of you when he walked up and said, No, it didn't scare me. I mean, Chaz I mean, is... I know him and it scares me when he walks up. <laughs> well, maybe that's because you know him. <laughs> that's, that's right. True. That's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> no, it was great. No, I, mean, I really, I really, no, it was, it was a breath of fresh air, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I loved being in Paris. I, I, you know, I, I loved Paris, but I did too, but, uh, it's hard to be away from home for a long time. And that was, you know, two weeks into my trip and it was nice to see a, a friendly face and know like we have a lot in common and yeah, it was great. It's hard. I mean, I, I actually felt guilty. Uh, and I've said this to other people that I did not know more French because the French seemed to know a lot of English. Everybody in Europe knows a lot of English. Yeah, and I felt very guilty for not knowing, for not taking the time to learn other people's languages. I really did. I think that that, I kind of felt the same way a little bit, but at the same time, like English is, like ev everybody's like looking to the United States now, like for, yeah, for, you know, like English speaking, but this is terrible. You're gonna have to like edit this out. <laughs> but, okay, I can take it out. <laughs> but um, Stop listening to people. Uh, I'm trying to remember where I'm they going already that. have. <laughs> anyway, these glasses are tiny. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, they're very that, tiny. Wasn't, that wasn't no, so bad. <laughs> there is, I mean, <laughs> wait a minute. He hasn't said what he. So, go ahead and say it though, George. I don't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> Talking about now, English English leads the way because, but, but I mean, there is a there's a. Well, thing. that's what Obama. That's said. the thing. That's the thing is like is yeah you you know for us to like for me to learn French has a lot smaller utility than for a Frenchman to learn English and, and I worldwide. I found that... Um, and maybe that's not true, but that's what that's my impression. Do you find that there was a different experience being over there with a guitar on your back as opposed to just being an American there touring? Because as soon as I walked into like... Uh, I went to two open mic nights, and, and I had a little portable guitar with me, but as soon as I walked in there and they found out I was an American, they wanted to talk American music with me. Mm -hmm. And I think if you walked in there with a giant 
I don't know, just as a tour, a normal tourist, not an ambassador of music, if you will, entertain me that expression. Yeah. It was a different reception, I think. So if they wanted to talk uh, American music, what, who did they want to talk about? I, uh, for me, they wanted to talk with me about blues music. And I was happy. I love the blues. So I was happy yeah. to entertain him. And I was so thrilled when I was talking to a guy and he knew who, I, and I said one of my favorite players was Robin Ford. And I flown you his album. And he said, I know who Robin Ford is. I was thrilled. Someone in Paris knew who that was. And he recommended me artists to go check out, which I did. I wrote them down and I went and... Are we going to have them on the show? The Parisian or the artist that he recommended? The one he recommended. Uh, neither. No. <laughs> neither one's coming, but... Oh, okay. But there, no, it was somebody in New York. He said, go check this one out. And I said, okay, I'll, I will. I, but I was very did you like? Did you like the artist? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was he a blues player? Blues player, yeah. Okay. And I was, uh, it was uh, Papa Chubby or something like that. Papa Chubby. Yeah. All right. But it was it good. It sounds like I'm, a place where you could get a good pizza. Or or something that, it sounds like a place where you get something Willie Nelson would like, a good blunt, right? <laughs> a good chub. <laughs> sounds like, Papa sounds like you eat something you'd get in a hot tub full of women. <laughs> now oh, he's I'm doing so glad it. we're back to that. <laughs> you know, I, I was going to try to just go away from I, that so you wouldn't be in a lot of trouble. I'm, now you're doing it. I'm finally inspired. I haven't, you know, you write like three songs a week. I write three a year. <laughs> but now I'm inspired to write a fourth and it's going to be called Girls in a Hot Tub. Oh, I wasn't thinking it. That's a good title. Hot, yeah. Sounds like a Rolling a Stones album. Girls yeah. in a Hot Tub. Yeah, it does. Just hot tubbing. I don't know. Yeah, hot tubbing. When the whip Ooh. comes down. Oh, what album is that off of? Some girls. Some girls. Some girls in a hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> God. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Isn't that from Shakespeare? Yes. Yes. Something like that. All right, we should get to one of George. You know what? It's hard <laughs> to go to your next song after talking about girls in a hot tub. <laughs> uh, I'll try to give you a light because it's like an inspirational song. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to come from... Not that Girls in a Hot Tub is not inspirational. It's pretty inspirational. I, I've been in... I mean... A guy that writes three songs a week would have to put something about Girls in a Hot Tub in there. That would have to be on your mind. Yeah. Oh, always on my mind. Yeah. So I let's mean, talk about I'll Try to Give You Light. All right. A little bit. I'm, I'm going back to... A song I don't know if I can get through if we were, if I were to play it, but the the jiggle song seems appropriate for that. But but yeah, let's we should play that later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let, let, so let's go to this one. Well, um, let's go to this. Let's one, switch buddy. gears. <clears throat> um. This is a meaningful song to me. I, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, coming to Nashville and deciding to pursue this as a career, writing songs, that it's my it's my mission and my personal goal to try and uh, spread positivity and uh, just trying to be an, you know an example of a good person for people. So that's that's really what the song is about. I like that. Nothing bad about that at all. No. Do you have any children, by the way? Not yet. Okay. I was about to ask the same question, Mike. You and I think. Well, you can go ahead and ask it if you'd like. I'll. He can answer it again. That's <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's go to the song. And we'll go to our third beer from Cool Springs Brewery. I took a class in painting. Professor didn't know my name. My work needed explaining. It never looked the same. Like a red balloon, someone let go I was blowing in the wind Not thinking about what I didn't know Floating upwards to my end Now half my life might be over And tomorrow I may die Every day the end gets closer And I look death in the eye I wonder if I'll be loved when I'm up or if I'll be forgotten No matter how I try But I'll try I'll try to give you life I have faith in God above And the good Lord 
Lord Jesus Christ Live the way I want to live in love Always giving away his life My desire to leave a mark is in vain It's divine My DNA says better the lives of all humankind Now half my life might be over and Every day the end gets closer I look death in the eye I wonder if I'll be loved when I'm up in the sky Or if I'll be forgotten No matter how I try But I'll try So forget me if you wanna, I won't take it personally But when you wake up tomorrow, think about who you wanna be Think about what you wanna leave behind for posterity Think about what you wanna leave behind for posterity No matter how I try But I'll try Yeah, I'll try I'll try to give you light No, we'll get after the show and we'll hang out Because what, what are these glasses? Three ounces? I don't know Three. I'm. I've never measured them, George. That's a good question. These taste. You know what? Let me take a Two picture a of you with a tasting glass. Hold on, and, and we'll put that up on the. It's on like a, it's like a shot of beer. So they know that we're not here just to get sauced. Although I thought we were. I'm. I wake up every day with that intention. You know, if I mean these these three bombers, <laughs> if, if each of us were to have one a full one of these bombers, it would oh, be man. a terrible show. Yes, but now that we've all here, you go. I think it'd be a good show. Let me get a picture of Mike opening up the beer. Hold on. What's the third beer? Perfect. Because we're now kind of putting the video podcast out there. And and that beer, the third one is called the Brussels Muscle Belgian Style Dark Ale. And we've learned over the last few episodes how greatly innovative the Belgians, 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 <laughs> Belgians, how whatever. There's people in Belgium were with beer. They were great with beer. Great beer makers and your people i think maybe the belgians were the ones who did the open fermentation i think no you're right i think so and and you know what's not uh tennessee brew works um if you go out to tennessee brew works here in nashville the brewmaster is very influenced by the belgium beers and and great stuff out there right mike we went there for a day where was tennessee that? brew works yeah. remember they had a really that's where we ate outside yeah yeah Great beers with all kinds, and and like a, like I was I got a to great hamburger too, and there. you got a burger too from a van <laughs> yeah. that was parked outside. Yeah, a it was van great. burger. Yeah, and <laughs> the hamburger was good too. But I think they use a lot of natural, <laughs> like like farmhouse ingredients, like berries or uh, uh, or the different grains mm -hmm. that you associate with a farmhouse. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Like, this is a dark beer. Is that one mine? It is dark. Yeah, we, not, I need to look at that color scale. Not, again. Oh, Mike's got it. He'll pass it to you. Not as dark as a stout, but it's it's a caramel darkness, right? It's like a cola. And it, mm -hmm. I got no head on mine. <laughs> right. You guys get head? You talking about your no beer? Head. Yeah. <laughs> I got no head at all <laughs> on my beer. <laughs> I'm going to say Amber Brown. Oh, who? Amber Brown. I know her. She lives down the street. Yeah. <laughs> she looks good, too. Great. Oh, man. She can... She is hot. 
You don't even need the heater in the hot tub. She just gets in and it bubbles. You promised we'd have her on the show. When are we going to do that? Amber, I think she's coming on uh, next week. I All mean, right. I can't. I don't want her to be on the do show. Do you want me to do that when, uh, are you out of town or anything? No, but I'm afraid if I actually get her on the show, she'll stop talking to me. You know, I keep saying, next week, next week, Amber. Amber. You know what I mean? Amber. Amber Brown. Amber Brown, the hot <sighs> chick from Post Creek. Getting down with Amber Brown. Yeah. Yeah. From around Amber. town. Amber. Amber. Let's see her in the wedding gown. All right. This just got interesting. Is she married? Um, She's married to a... Um, is she Belgian? She's Belgian, and she's married to a young man by the name of Cecil. <laughs> Cecil. Well, we better wait till Cecil goes out of town before we invite her to be on the show. Yeah. I don't want Cecil in oh, here. Yeah, how that name came to mind. Let's smell and it's taste. Kind of, it's kind of red. Ooh, what a smell. That would a good smell. Yeah, it is kind of reddish. It looks like RC Cola. RC sounds good. I, I could have a moon pie with this. <laughs> <laughs> you are a moon pie. <laughs> wait, I smell. It's kind of sweet. Sweet but malty. Sweet, like sweet, but like a whiskey barrel or something. Mm-hmm. Right? Am I on the right? George, I'm, I'm looking to your opinion because you've brewed beer. <laughs> uh, George? <laughs> yeah. uh, George? George? <laughs> no, it's it's smooth and it, it is, it's kind of malty and a little bit. It's still got a little fruit in it. It's pretty good. Can we I, do, oh, I haven't tasted mine yet. Let's drink it. Ready? One, two, three. To all my friends. You could get them all in this room. All oh, my friends, yeah. That was an abrupt ending. To all my friends. Wow. Hey. A, do you know that quote? Do you know where that's from? No. It's a movie called uh, Barfly. Great movie. Oh, okay. Oh, that's... What the hell? What's going on here? <laughs> my daughter's texting me right now. <laughs> and Dad? Really, yeah. She says she didn't get ice cream, but she got a yummy dessert. She was going to get ice cream tonight. So... Are you going to be a dad or are you going to be a host? you got to make All up right, your I'll mind. I'll stop. I'll stop <laughs> texting my daughter. But okay. She's been on the show, though. Mike knows. She yeah, knows. she has. That's cool. She, she knows her beer. She did. She did very well. <laughs> Identifying beer for a nine-year-old. No, she uh, she brought us drinks that were non-alcoholic. That's true. That, that, that was our non-alcoholic show. No, we excellent. had both, I think. We had. She brought smoothies. We brought beer. And we talked about our top... We all brought in three songs to talk about. We had a family show, Mike, Adia, AC, my daughter, and me. And we talked about three. We all brought in three songs we wanted to talk about, three songs that were important to you us. You know, we could That's we cool. could enjoy, we could invite George to do that, and he could write them I was gonna on say, the show. George, are there? On the show. He's so prolific, he could just write three songs right here on the show. three songs that you want to talk about? Like three songs that are important to you in your I life? I don't know that I could do that on the show. And now Maybe. there's more. You can hear the, is this my ringtone? There it is. But Jordan, what are the three songs that are important to you? Man, you're putting me on the spot here. I don't know. Um, it's all right. I know. We had time to think I'm, about I'm it. I'm really terrible at making lists of things like uh, like that. I bet that was um, hard as a kid when you were, you know, thinking about Christmas and you were trying to make a list. Well, I could think about things I wanted and write them down. But deciding like what the things were that were most important, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. Uh, three songs that were important to me. I don't. I, I don't. I really yeah. don't think I can answer that right off the top of my head. That's okay. What about the three you played for us today? Yeah. What made you pick those three? That's a good question. Mike. That is a good question. Um. I don't know. I didn't really have them all picked out before I came in, but I kind of thought about it, and I think it was just uh, the fr- fixing shit seemed appropriate to. Thanks. <laughs> this, this podcast <laughs> to the demographic. Uh, the second one is you know. A songwriter's favorite song is the one that they just wrote. So, so it was that's recent. what was going on. And we've said this on the show, and I don't mean to interrupt you before that's song right. number three, but I have to admire somebody who writes a song on a Thursday and then is willing to play it to the world on Friday because I have to I have to let my new songs air out. I'm afraid to play it. Oh, that's when smart. Not. I mean, I probably no, should. I do too. No, I mean, I, I admire <laughs> people that do that. Chaz and I were at a writer's night, and this guy comes out one, and he said, I was in the bathroom while I go and wrote this song. I'd like to share it with you. 
it takes there's songs still I, that I'm I, gonna start doing that. That's not gonna be true, but it'll work. No, but there's songs that I that I'm work that I, I there's songs of mine that I were three years ago that I feel like I'm still working that they don't. Oh yeah, they, you know what I mean. They're still a work in progress. Yeah, I've heard a couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, the third you song, know. we interrupted you. Oh, the third song is I'll Try to Give You Light. And I just liked, I like to, uh, I like to play that as pos- as much as possible. And, and I got to get uh, my phone out of the room. room. It keeps going That's off a good heart. song. Thanks. Um, it, maybe it's an important it? text. No, it's not. She may be in a hot tub or something. <laughs> <laughs> can hit her head on a fan. <laughs> we won't hear my cool. ringtone anymore. I'll go catch up with the no, messages later. Like, Hey, we got to do uh wait, did we, we finish talking about songs? We tasted yeah, the beer. Three, three songs. About three All songs. right, three songs in which you're hard to pick. Let's let's go to the speed round. All right, here's what we got to do. George, we're going to we're going to give you 10 quick questions. Oh god. And I got to switch screens here too. I'm a Put slow a thinker, so this is going to be uh, interesting thing. Well, try to get it down in three minutes, I think is what we give you. Well, let's give him nine since he's a slow thinker. All right. Give him nine, nine minutes. <laughs> and you just answer these every you want to. And I don't even know what the questions are because they come up. I have a program because I am a software developer by day. Hey. You're very soft. Thank you. <laughs> I have my own program that pulls up the questions randomly. I don't even know what they are yet. But let's put on the timer. Oh, wait. <laughs> There's your programmer. <laughs> Fire that man. It's great until you hit the wrong button. <laughs> that reminds me of high school. I'm always hitting the wrong button. <laughs> yes. Did I mention I was a programmer by day? All right. Let's hit the clock on and let's go to these questions. Here we go. All right. Name a food that repulses you. That repulses me? Yes. Uh, long pasta. What's your favorite color to wear? Blue. What movie or TV show do you take guilty pleasure in watching? Hmm. Right now, guilty pleasure? The... Yeah. Don't admit you watch it, but you watch it, and you'll love it. Uh, I don't know. I usually admit freely to TV shows. Does it have girls in hot tubs? No. <laughs> I, I'm watching The Killing right now, and oh. it's terrible. Oh, but it's good. You like it, though. It's a, it's a, it's it has no redeeming qualities, but That's it's okay. dark and awful. How about this? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being ultra pessimistic and 10 being ultra eternal optimist, where do you place yourself? Three. <laughs> You're pessimistic? Wait, no, wait. The, oh, the, the other, other side of that. Okay, seven. seven. If you had a theme song that played every time you walked into a room, what would it be? Uh, the Johnny Carson theme song. Oh, I like that. Name a song or artist you like to fall asleep to. Spiritualized. Name a movie that makes you cry. Field of Dreams. Interesting. If you were a, if you were to give yourself a nickname, what would it be? Uh, I have no idea. I have a couple nicknames. I mean, well, you can, yeah, just hear one. Uh, my friend Doug calls me Fats, <laughs> like, which he like and Minnesota a couple other fans? friends have, have picked that up. But uh, yeah, you're not a fat guy though. No, we got pictures to prove it, and the pictures add ten pounds or something. Uh, you have been banished to a desert island and can take three items. Name one or all of them. All right. Uh, guitar, wife, uh, hot tub. a lot of food. <laughs> yeah, hot tub. <laughs> Hollywood. And a fan. <laughs> No, the fan can stay. Okay. Hollywood wants to make a movie about your life. Name the actor or actress, if you prefer, that plays you. The actress that plays me? The actor that plays you, yeah. The actor that plays me. Um, hmm. <laughs> Who don't... would play George? Uh, Jack Black. Ooh, why Jack Black? Oh, shit. I keep hitting the speed round song. Why Jack Black? You don't look like Jack Black. I don't know. I think he's... He's, he's funny, a, though. I like... A funny guy. He's, he's musically talented. I don't know. All right. There we go. Okay. <laughs> nine minutes. It. Your he nine minutes is up. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. He was way... You you were actually... I stopped the clock late. You were about two, two minutes and 30 seconds. I stopped it late. You were fine. Wow. That's pretty good time. I was doing terribly with the buttons. 
After bragging I mean, I about have, my... I could have, like, uh, made a lot of sounds while I was thinking about some of those, but I felt like... <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's good. Probably should not do that. I like Jack Black. I like School of Rock. I don't know if Jack Black's the right guy, but nah, who would you? I had, have to, play I, had to, I had to choose something. Who would play George? Come on, Mike, you can cast him. Harrison Ford. Okay. Nah, <laughs> Harrison Ford maybe when he's young, but he's not young anymore. Right. You got to find somebody <laughs> young to play you. Because uh, Harrison Ford's old and he's wearing an earring. He looks stupid. Uh, He's but he's got a young, young, young wife. That's yeah, probably she, why he pierces his She's ears. getting older every day. That's true. Yeah. What is she now? 31? <laughs> is it Calista Flockhart? So? She's got to be 40-something, right? I don't know. I don't either. She's got to be my age, at least. No, I don't think she's that old. Oh, man. How old are you? 33? The age of Christ crucified? No, nah, I'm 46. <laughs> That's a line from a Henry Miller book. I don't know. I'm 33 at the age of Christ crucified. That's the only reason I know that. I don't know, but uh, who would pay, play George? That's the question in hand. Oh, yeah, Henry Miller's on the wall. Yeah, I don't great, know. Great writer. I love him. Uh, I don't know who would play you. You're kind of your own. That's a good thing. Yeah, you're your own. I, I play myself. Brand, yeah. There you go. Hey. I like it. I like it, too. All right. Is beer going down pretty easy? I like it. Good beer. Yeah. Good I, experience. Honestly, of... I think of the three... The one, and this surprises me because of the three styles, I would have expected to like the double IPA, but I think the Saison was my favorite. Wow. Well, let's go. First, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Audience Studios. Great place to record. And then let's go back and judge all three of the beers. I hope I didn't jump the gun there. Sorry. Not at no, all. No, no, you can't jump the gun. Oh, we, it's a big thing. Tonight's show is your gun. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, but that's all right. All right, let's go and uh, hear from Audience. <laughs> Hey folks, are you a musician or a band looking to get the best quality recording of your music at the lowest rates in town? Then you should go to the recording studio of choice for so many great artists, including myself, Chaz E., and Mike Mitchell from At The Hops. That's Audion Recording Studios. As a special exclusive to Audion Recording Studio will offer all At The Hops listeners 10% off of their first session that'll make your next album or demo absolutely affordable for more information please call 615-667-1080 or go to www.audionrecording.com a-u-d-i-o-n recording.com And for a minute, I thought you were actually singing that, Chaz. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, it was Mike. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> Mike did it from across the room. We're at the judgment time. The bells are ringing. We're going to judge all three of these cool spring brewery beers that we had tonight. And, George, let me explain to you here. You are the judge tonight. You being the guest. You the judge. You the judge. You the judge, mm. man. And you get to judge them on these three ratings that we give. It can either be, if it's great, you say, it's a hit. Get the sound. It could be, it was okay, close enough for rock and roll. Rock and roll! Or, well, no musician wants to hear, don't quit your day job. You get to hear the boo. So <laughs> The boo. Yeah. <laughs> Those are kids going boo. Although Mike and I have agreed a couple of times, it almost sounds like the kids are going yay, but they're saying boo. Yeah, I, I never did think it was a boo. It actually is a boo. Yay, so let's, boo. Let's start with our first beer. Let me get the list out, and I'll explain to everybody what the first beer is for us in case they're turning in late, but they should be listening to the whole show because we talked about girls in hot tubs. Okay, the first beer we had was from Cool Springs Brewery. It was the Circumcision Mosaic Hot Saison Ale. And... George Irwin, what did you think it was? It's a hit, close enough for rock and roll, or don't quit your day job. I gotta say, I hate the name, but I think it's a hit. Yeah, the name kind of sucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> Light and hazy, sun splash, golden orange hue with a billowing head of alabaster colored foam. Smell as of citrus, white grape, well, whatever. Anyway, it's good stuff. And um, 
Beer Advocate gave that a, oh, I don't actually have a Beer Advocate rating. You're the first one to rate it. It's a hit. Above Beer Advocate. Mike Mitchell, what do you think of that first beer? I think it's a hit. All right. Some applause in there, too, just for the hell of it. That's two hits. I kind of liked it, too. I don't know if I'd buy it again. So are you a hit? I'm going to say close enough for Uh Uh-oh. You're always a rebel, aren't you? (laughs) I'm a rebel, Doc. He's a rebel. (laughs) Yeah. Rebel, Johnny, rebel. Johnny Yuma was a rebel. And then the <laughs> Johnny Fro- Yuma was a, <laughs> was a rebel. rebel. He roamed through the West. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. <laughs> but it was good. It was good. It had a lot of flavor in it. And it was one of those, it was complex. Mm-hmm. It was, you had, you needed more than one taste to get the essence of it, which I like. So it was a complex beer. Let's go to beer number Two, the Hop Brutality from Cool Springs Brewery out in Franklin, Tennessee. This is an American Double Imperial IPA. George Irwin, did you think it was It's a Hit, Close Enough for Rock and Roll, or Don't Quit Your Day Job? You know, the uh, it wasn't as brutal as I expected, and it seemed... I don't know. I, I, I love... I'm being... I love Diable... Uh, Diable... Double IPAs are, fan, are my, one of my favorites, and I'm going to go with Close Enough for Rock and Roll. Yeah. I just love, I think I say that rating all the time because I love that sound, but yeah, Rock that's and Roll. Good. I see. Mike Mitchell, what did you think of it? Rock and Roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> Why do you say that? Why do I say it? Yes. Well, it was just, it was okay. You know, it wasn't great. It was okay. Yeah. That's, I, what, that's how, why I said it. I think I'd say the same thing. Close enough for. It was good beer. It was why a real you, good. Why did you say it? It's no Pliny the Elder. What is it? We need to get another beer. <laughs> it's a, good luck getting that. It's from California. It's a double IPA and it's kind of oh, like. What's it called? It's called Pliny the Elder. We'll find it. We'll find it. Yeah. We'll get it. Yeah, it was good. I don't know if it was, it's a hit, but it was good. I enjoyed it. I'm, I could, I might enjoy some more in a few minutes. Let's I'm go sure, to the, what? I'm sure you will. Yeah. Let's go to the third beer, which was called Brussels Muscle Belgian Style Dark Ale from Cool Springs Brewery out in Franklin, Tennessee, a Belgian strong dark ale. George Irwin, did you think it was, it's a hit, close enough for rock and roll, or don't quit your day job? Close enough for rock and roll. And why? Why did you think? That? Um, it it didn't hit me as like the classic dark Belgian style. I mean, yeah. it it was kind of there, but it was kind of just kind of it was a little flat. I don't know. It hit me a little flat. It was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed drinking it, but it it wasn't the uh, Belgian I was expecting. Now I'm looking at the description right here, and it says with a tall, lasting taupe head. <laughs> that was not there. No. I've never seen a taupe head, Mike. Have you seen a taupe head? Yeah, I owned one when I was a kid. It was a great little bike. <laughs> Bananas taupe and head. clove. My friend it. had one he wore on, like, because he was going bald. <laughs> taupe head. It blew off on a windy day. I do taste, they said there should be figs and plums. You taste that in here. But you can taste some fruit. Yeah. Um, Mike, what did you think of the third beer? Well, Brussels muscle, I was, I was kind of afraid it would beat me up. It kind of scared me a little bit. Yeah, sounds frightening. So I said, good enough for rock and roll. Roll! I'm going to say the same thing just because I like to hear that. (laughs) But it is good. It is a little bit, it's got a little pruney flavor to it or something. So really the number one beer had two hits. If you were like an old person, which I am becoming every day, (laughs) this would probably be good because it's got a pruney Flavor. It's probably a diuretic. Let's right? talk about it tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. In oh, the morning. <laughs> um, did we get a beer? No, no beer advocate rating on that one. The only one we had a beer advocate rating on was the Hot Brutality. Got an 88. Very good. That's a pretty. That's pretty much close enough for rock and roll. So what? What is the that's highest a pretty you good can rating. get on that on their rating? A hundred. Um. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah, I think they got to get. That's to the odd. That 88 would be very good. It's and, an. It's, it's like a B plus. It's like twelve. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's a B+. like twelve percent off. But B plus is not very good. B it's plus not. is good. Well, my parents A plus my parents is very that. good. You know, you got a point there, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Can I try some of that 
Hot brutality. Hot. Let's see. What? Let's try it again. There you go. Try it again. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I want to hear George as we're wrapping up here. What? Where do people find you online? Mm. In the internet or at hot tubs? Fantastic question. Um, on hot tubs, if you use your mobile phone and don't drop it in the water, you can find me at www.georgeirwin.com. That's I R W I N. Um, and if you guys are interested in the song wire, yeah. every month, direct to your email inbox, cultural break, you get to reflect on something other than your day to day. It's www.georgeirwin.com slash song wire. So we can So you've got that up and running or? Yes. Okay. I love that idea. And every, instead of getting some bullshit ad every month about I should save 20% on, you know, strawberries or something. Yeah. I don't need, I get a song. Yeah. The other, original song. The, uh, the official start date for this, like I'm going to officially launch it, I guess, like sometime in the next week or two next month. But uh, as of the airing date, you can go there to that and sign up. I love it. I'm gonna sign up. Like, I think I will too. Yeah, that you know what that is? It's a yeah, it's a hit. Sign him up. <laughs> sign him up. You never do. Oh, whoops! I got a little bit of mic in there. I can't control the soundboard anymore, Mike. You notice that? Yeah, I noticed. Fire that man! Everybody, have fired. A hobby tonight. There we go. <laughs> All right, Joy Man. I'm so glad we did this. Likewise, uh, uh, great show. Great show. What a show. stroke of luck meeting you in Paris. I know. That's amazing. From Paris to Nashville, we got to get out and play some together, and we might even play yeah. a little bit uh, after we wrap up here and record yeah. it for. Uh, you had a song about Jiggle. <laughs> we should play that. Fate. It's fate. Absolutely great, brilliant, and uh, Mike. Good to have you here as always. Thank you, my friend. And it's course. good to be here. Yeah. And we'll be back next week with another interesting guest. I think. Should I announce the next guest or not? Go ahead. Because it changed. Last time I announced the next guest, it changed. Well, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. And in fact, George, thank you because you, we changed dates for you. you yeah, know, I had to our, cancel the, the one later and yeah, this worked out. You were not supposed to be this week. Yeah. Somebody else was supposed to be, but they can't, I had to cancel and you had to, it all worked out. Well, since it always changes, why don't we just say we're having Tom Waits next week? Next week we're Perfect. having Tom Waits <laughs> and Bette Midler. They're both there you gonna go. Be, I don't know why I thought of Bette Midler. Man, have they performed together ever? Only you know, on our show. No, actually they dated. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, they have performed That's amazing. together. Yeah, they were an item for a there while. There was another, Betsy and I were just talking about another relationship he had. It was pretty long. Oh, with whom? Uh, oh wait, let me guess. Ricky Lee Jones. Ricky Lee Jones. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. were in California. They yeah, were young and in yeah. love. Uh huh. It was. Um, wait, let me find it. Where's my my Mike Mitchell sound bites? They had something that was sexual. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> now, Tom, you can come on the show any day. In, in and, fact, we've asked him. Yeah, even if he hates our show, he can come on and tell us how much oh, we yeah. suck. Well, everybody that's been on our show, I think, hates it. So, I know uh, they do. <laughs> or at least they do after Terrible. it's over. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is fun. Yeah, George, thanks again, man. We're going to go in and hang out a little bit, finish these beers off. Everybody else, go to Facebook and like us and go to iTunes and please leave us feedback. And Give us five stars. Ones. Thank you, Mike. Five stars. Cheer. <laughs> Thanks for listening to At The Hops. Don't forget to leave us feedback and visit us regularly at www.atthehops.com. All songs performed on this program are the property of the artist. Use of these songs without the artist's consent is prohibited. See you next round. Because I like the taste of imported beer and I like the kind they brew right here. Because I'm very open-minded, that's the way I've been reared And I want to have a great, great day You the judge, you the judge